With free agency set at what many fans think is a huge area of need, the center position. But is it really a big concern for the Heat? And if so, who are some of the possible targets Miami should look at in free agency? We'll break it all down today on this edition of Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Heat Nation. It's a Wednesday edition of Locked On Heat, your daily podcast covering all things Miami Heat. However, you may be listening or watching on YouTube, on Odyssey, or on your favorite podcast app. Thanks so much for making us your first listen every day. I'm David Ramil, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Wes Goldberg. Locked On Heat is partnering with Arcade One Up to give away three, that's right, three NBA Jam Shack machines. These are the guys known for making the incredible retro three-quarter scale at home arcade games like Pac-Man, Golden Tea, and many more. Enter to win on arcade1up.com slash locked on. That's arcade1up.com slash locked on for your chance to win one. We're talking about free agency just a few hours away from the start of free agency, more or less, as you're listening to this. And one of the areas of need, well, at least in the opinion of many, is the center position for Miami. Obviously, size is a concern. Rebounding is a concern for Miami. They were often exposed during their playoff run, but how important is it for them to make a transformation to their roster and the style of play by upgrading their center position? We'll debate that, but we'll start off with the news that P.J. Tucker seems very, very likely to sign with the Philadelphia 76ers as being reported by Keith Pompey, formerly of Locked On Sixers. Uh, Keith is, well, he's plugged in. He's been covering yes. the team for quite some very time. And so he would know better than anybody that it seems very likely. We talked about this in our most recent episode, looking at the upgrades to the power forward position. In the eventuality yeah. that PJ does wind up leading the team, we presented a couple of different names here and there that might fill in for Tucker if and when he does leave. And it looks like that seems to be the case. Three years, probably close to $30 million for that deal to happen. And uh, it looks like PJ is on his way out. Wes, what do you make of the news? Yeah, not just Keith Pompey. Obviously, he has it. Mark Stein has it, reporting that it would be a surprise if it wasn't, uh, if if P.J. Tucker did not end up in Philadelphia at this point. So it does look like P.J. is on his way out. And, you know, I want to kind of address that first because some people are wondering, you know, why is it that uh, P.J. Tucker would leave the, the Miami Heat? Uh, why not just wait and see if the Heat are able to? to offer their full mid-level exception, right? Because right now the Heat don't really know what they want to do this offseason because there's so many options available to them. While it looks like the Sixers are very much zeroing in on P.J. Tucker. Um, but if you're P.J. Tucker, this is probably your last chance at 37 years old to get a long-term deal like this. Double, like $10 million plus a year on these things. It makes no sense if you're P.J. to wait around, even if you have loyalty to Miami, if Miami is going to wait and see how this whole offseason unfolds, then there's no guarantee that if P.J. Tucker waits with the Heat, that that offer is still there for the Sixers. The Sixers don't care about waiting for the Heat. The Sixers want to fill out their roster. And maybe there's another option that comes down the line, and they give the MLE to that player instead of P.J. Tucker. So P.J. Tucker getting his money, it looks like, unless the Heat decide that they want to tap completely into their taxpayer mid-level exception um, and go ahead and re-sign P.J. Tucker... Uh, it, that's why it looks like PJ is on his way out. It's not because Miami doesn't want him. In fact, Miami would love to have PJ Tucker back. It would solve a lot of Absolutely. problems. if PJ Tucker just took the, the $8.4 million that they can offer him with the early bird exception, but there's a better offer on the table and you can't blame PJ for taking it. And we've seen this play out in many different ways. It played out with Dwayne Wade to some degree. It's played out with a number of players. Players feel slighted when they're not made the obvious priority in terms of free agency. And it's not to say that he's not a priority, but he's not the priority. As recently as yesterday, they were talking about potential trades for Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. It yeah. looks like they're trying to acquire their whale or at least their complementary score. And maybe the assumption is, well, we could try to work with, you know, PJ as much as we possibly can. And maybe he feels, you know what, I, I'm ready I, I feel a little bit insulted maybe that you didn't throw the full 10 million at me. You know, it always works out that way. Yeah. And it's not a knock on PJ. Like you said, he's he's been due for a big payday for his whole career. He's never really gotten it. And if he can get that long-term security, 
That's a huge thing for a guy who's 37 years old. He needs that right now at this point in his career. He wants to continue playing, but who knows for how much longer he can actually do so at a high level. And if somebody's willing to offer three years at such a high level, uh, at such a high amount, he'd be a fool not to take it. All of us would do the same. So. Yeah, it's a business That's decision, man. Like, there's Absolutely. No, nothing wrong with it. Uh, and I think he would like to be here. But, um, you know, if you do give him that full mid-level exception, then you're pretty much cornering yourself into only having the minimum exception and uh, the veteran minimum exception. And then whatever kind of trades you can maneuver. And I don't know that that's good enough for this Heat team me, that me, is obviously me, looking to upgrade. Because Heat's departure or imminent departure seems to be kind of like the first of steps uh, in terms of like maybe an awareness that their best opportunity was last year to capitalize on a championship. Do you think there might be any kind of awareness on his part of saying, Look, we got as close as we possibly could last year where we were then a, a missed three-point shot of advancing to the NBA Finals, but we were able to do as much as possible with Jimmy aging, with Kyle Lowry aging, with you know, yeah. Bam maybe not taking that huge step no, forward. No, I, I, I think he, he looks at Philadelphia. I think he – I don't know if it's the writing on the wall, wall that the, the Heat window is closed, but I think he looks at a team like – Phil. he's not taking this from the Sacramento Kings. He's going to the Philadelphia 76ers. They're a legit right. contender. James Harden coming back. Uh, most likely, it looks like. Uh, Joel Embiid, obviously MVP candidate. A good roster all the way around. A coach that everybody respects, uh, players respect, and Doc Rivers. Um, a front office that he knows very well, with Daryl Morey obviously leading things over there. So, yeah, it's not like it's the Sacramento Kings that he's deciding to take more money from. This is not just a money move. It's just partially a money move. And it just comes with the added benefit of, hey, I could still compete for titles, which you can right. do in Philadelphia. Um, but, you know, we, we mentioned some of the other names uh, on the last – episode Kyle Anderson Otto Porter not like the big guys the way that P like you kind of consider PJ Tucker a big man while you look at Kyle Anderson and Otto Porter more as like modern fours probably would have been like small mm -hmm. forwards eight years ago now they're really kind of more of the, the the modern day power forward who could stretch the floor both of those guys could do that not as big rebounding type of guys as PJ Tucker is not as good even defensively as PJ Tucker is but both of those guys would be good options, but the other, the other option that Miami has, if not a, a, a stretch four or power forward, is just shifting Bam out of bio over to power forward, and and go ahead and getting more of a traditional seven footer to play next to Bam, which I know is something that fans really want to talk about. I know we're going to carve into that in a little bit, but um, I do think that there are some other stretch four power forward options available to Miami that they could look at, but this also puts a little bit more pressure on Nikola Jovic to mm -hmm. maybe make an impact sooner rather than later. I don't think they're going to rely on Jovic. I don't see Jovic starting mm -hmm. opening night. I don't, I don't think that's going to be the case. But um, they're they're going to need him to play some minutes, probably more so if P.J. Tucker doesn't come back, which it looks like is going to be the case. Well, they they wouldn't rush him, right? Like they, no. I don't think that would be the case. Like One thing we saw from Tyler Hero in Summer League was that kid was ready. Like Maybe he would, you know, to, to something that Spo has said countless number of times, he never shies away from the moment. In fact, he seems to embrace sure. these kinds of things. I don't know if Jovic, if Jovic fits that you know category. I don't know yeah. if he, he's a gamer like that where he just wants the ball in his hands. It seems like he might be the case. They're hyping him up. Well, I asked Pat Riley about it during the, right. the press the conference on Monday. Minutes, yeah. And and I said, like, do you expect him to take rotate play rotation minutes? And I don't think he ducked the question. I think he was being honest when he said, We'll see. Like, we have summer league coming yeah. up, we have training camp. Yeah. Like, that's when you win the minutes. That's when those things are determined. We don't know who's gonna be playing what at this right. point. And so um, we'll see with Jovic. I let, let, let's put it this way. There's gonna be more of an opportunity for him to go ahead and earn those minutes. Let's put it that way. I, I think yeah. that's absolutely true, no matter what happens. That's fair. Uh well, we'll talk about whether or not a shift in the way that Miami's roster is constructed might be necessary, whether or not they do need to upgrade the center position or the forward position, whether or not they need to shift Bam down. Because I think it's an interesting debate to have, especially yeah. with the kind of free agents that might be available. Plus, we'll get into a few of those names and options that Miami might explore in free agency. But before we do that, just want to tell you about a relatively sponsor of the show. Uh, it's called Sakara. You've probably heard about it before. Feeling your best starts with what you eat. Everybody knows this. We talk about a number of different food items on the show, but Sakara helps you live a healthy, balanced lifestyle and truly enjoy it with delicious, plant-rich, transformational nutrition that builds a foundation for living in your best body. It's time to seek wellness, joy, and abundance in all areas of your life, starting with what you eat. And with Sakara, you get nutrient-dense meal snacks and supplements that nourish your body 
without ever sacrificing taste or quality. Believe me, as a vegetarian, I know how difficult it could be to find the right foods that you're comfortable with, that you feel healthy eating, and that you like to enjoy. None of that is an issue when it comes to Sakara because all their meals are carefully selected to become very good for you and to taste great as well. So Sakara is a wellness company anchored in food as medicine. Think of that concept, food as medicine, on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. That sounds great to me. And right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off their first order when they go to Sakara.com. Locked slash locked on 20, excuse me, to enter the code locked on 20 at checkout. That's Sakara, S A K A R A dot com slash locked on 20 to get 20% off your first order. Sakara dot com slash locked on 20. Thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. And just a reminder, you can always reach us via email at LockedOnHeat at gmail.com or via Twitter and using the hashtag AskHelloHeat. Be sure to please subscribe to the show on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. And as always, please leave a review. Here we are talking about the center position with the news that it seems likely that P.J. Tucker will be leaving Miami in free agency. So what happens next? We've talked about some options that Miami might have to replace P.J. at the four. We talked about Nikola Jovic, whether or not he gets some increased playing time. But is it possible that Miami's era of quote-unquote small ball might be at an end, whether or not it's time to shift Bam Adebayo over to the power forward spot and upgrade with a more traditional center? Or should they continue to tap into what was the you know, recipe for success during the 1920 season where they put Jay Crowder in at the four and it propelled Miami into a run to the NBA Finals? Where do you stand on that? Because I think it's an interesting debate. Yeah, um... I think it's worth having somebody on the roster who's more of a traditional center that pairs well with Bam Adebayo. But I don't know that you need to make that dramatic shift where you're starting Bam at the four and 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 starting a more traditional seven footer at the five. I, it depends. It depends on the kind of if you do go out and get a center who's starting caliber, then maybe you do mm-hmm. want to just start with your five best players. And, and in that case, we know that Bam can do it. He's switchable enough defensively that he could guard fours and guard fives doesn't matter like defensively it's not a concern whatsoever maybe you want to put more size maybe you don't want to switch so much and you want to have a center who drops and you're switching the other things out on the perimeter like there's ways that eric spolstra can maneuver this as long as it's the best players available that are on the court um but i do i i I think it's worth i think it's worth having that guy because i don't think they had that guy last year they played a little bit of bam and Dwayne deadman but that wasn't feasible yurtsevin obviously wasn't ready for that um, so if you can go ahead and get that guy, I, I think it's worth having at least that option on the roster. Yeah. Right. Who's the who's the best type? Like not a specific name because we don't know yeah, if we yeah. can even find that person. But what's the best type of He's potential gotta center? Got to be able to shoot threes and obviously yeah, defend the rim. He's got to be seven feet tall and defend the rim in a way. Cause three Bam, and B. Three and B, right? That Bam doesn't get a whole lot of blocks. This Heat team does not get a whole lot of blocks. Uh, they used to, like the way that the Heat, qualified their rim protection last year was with charges, right? That's mm-hmm. why they got over a hundred charges last oh, season defensively. That's how that's what that's what their block they considered that their blocked shot was their charges drawn. I don't know that you can keep keep relying on getting that whistle from the referees and just basically throwing your body in front of other players. I'll, they yeah. they might change that rule. Like that's kind of up for debate every single year. And if they change the rule, good luck with your rim protection stat now. So I think there is value in having a, a legit shot blocker on the roster somewhere. So I think he needs to be that. He obviously needs to space the floor because Bam's not doing that. Jimmy Butler isn't respected as a floor spacer. Um, they they need an, a floor spacer at that position to sort of unlock that front court pairing. Obviously, easier said than than to actually find that player. Now, what in the eventuality, and you just kind of hinted at, what if Bam is able to stretch the floor? What if he comes in and and I don't couldn't expect like. Best case scenario, he goes in and shoots what thirty five percent from yeah. three. I mean that, and that's that's asking for a lot to make that kind of and at what like four attempts per game again to be a respected, realistic threat from the three point line, and that shifts things dramatically. So let's assume because I do think that's the next wrinkle to add to his repertoire. Can you can you still go with a more traditional center one maybe that doesn't stretch the floor as effectively? Like I don't Rick know. Lopez- it, it, it it depends on how defenses react. I mean, like even Jonas Valanciunas made like this big leap into becoming yeah. a three point shooter, and you see in the playoffs like people are like, just, "All right, Wide man, open. take that three, take the three. Yeah. We don't care." 
Uh, Cooper Moorhead from Heat.com had a great breakdown about this a couple weeks ago, I think it was. And um, first of all, <laughs> I know you're saying like best case scenario, he's taking like three or four threes a game and shooting them at a, a, above a one third of the time clip. Yeah. Uh, that's just not going to happen. Like you don't go from not doing it to doing it all of a sudden. Like you just never see that in the NBA. So maybe even if he takes one a game, like that's still all right. Cool, man. Take your one a game. We'll let you have it. Nobody cares. Um, the the a world in which Bam Adebayo becomes not only just hitting a high percentage, thirty five percent, let's call it, like you said, but like also player like defenses caring about it in one from one season to the next is virtually zero. It's just not going to happen. So. Um, so they don't care about his mid range. That's a re- reliable weapon that he's. That's what I would say is years. the next. That's what I would say is the next wrinkle for him is actually improving on that mid range shot and opening the floor a little bit more because I think mm-hmm. defenses will be more willing to step up to seventeen or eighteen feet even versus mm-hmm. the three point line, which is an obviously different kind of connotation around it. So I think the next wrinkle is actually expanding that mid range game and just opening up the, the 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 that that first box near the basket a little bit more for Miami's uh, cutters and Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero, but. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, to answer your original question, if you were going to play Bam next to a center, it looks like somebody who theoretically was a fit in Kelly Olenek and Myers Leonard, seven footers who could space the floor with their three point shot. The problem was with Kelly Olenek, he couldn't rebound and for Myers Leonard, he couldn't play defense. And so, yeah, so like, even just like theoretically, you're like, all right, just as long as the guy blocks shots and hits threes, but you don't want to give up a ton of stuff on the boards. You don't want to have a, a center who is, um, a total weak point on on defense like it's more than just that these players are really hard to come by yeah i i, I find myself torn I, I don't know that there's a clear-cut answer like you know you're losing potentially again likely pj tucker and uh, for everything like he was a threat from the perimeter maybe he wasn't drawing defenses but you had to respect that corner shot like he was going to take it a sure. few times per game maybe it won't fall maybe it will but either way it's out there it's a weapon guys closed out on him you know they played yeah. off of him but they closed out hard on him yeah right uh so who's going to be able to step up and do that for miami and i don't know that they have an answer on the roster currently and i don't know that even if any of the names that we're going to be able to suggest tonight uh to it would be the same quality level three-point shooter that pj is but uh, we'll that, get into some of those names there so it's, well that's uh, why I'll, I'll we will get into some of the names but i'll just to reiterate that's why even if the perfect fit isn't on the uh, available, to get a guy who's almost like that could be helpful just yeah. off the bench where you could play them together for six minutes, eight minutes a game just to give things a different look. That might be a logical step, but we are going to get into some names. Yeah. I, I You know, I keep coming back to also like something that Spoh's reiterated a number of times. Like maybe you're not looking for the right player or anything like that, but you want the option. And I think you kind of hinted at it before as well. Yeah. You just want to have that kind of diverse roster where you can roll out a big if necessary, where you can roll out somebody who's a stretch player, maybe who's, a, you know, like a P.J. Tucker who can't play the five, et cetera. Yeah. So there's a lot of different options out there. Well, this is what we it's talked tight. about when they drafted Jovic. Yeah. Like that's the long-term solution. Jovic is not that right I'm now. Much to right? expect yeah. that, right? But it's... But like long term, three four years down the road, you could see where Bam is in the in the center of his prime, and Jovic is entering his, where he is that ideal front court partner. But um, it's there, there's some other options that we'll get to here in a minute too. All right, well uh, we'll talk about them next. But before we do that, just a reminder that BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info, where it's the NHL playoffs, Major League Baseball, or even the beginnings of the NFL futures. BetOnline.net is a place for you. You get all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores, news, podcasts, everything you might be looking for when it comes to the world of sports. BetOnline.net is the best spot for all of you. So go to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. Thanks for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. We'll be covering all of free agency, potential trades, whatever is going to be in the works for Miami. We'll have it here first. We'll break it all down, give you every perspective you need to keep you going through the offseason. We'll be in Las Vegas for summer league action to give you Nikola Jovic's first minutes in a Heat uniform. That should be exciting. Well, he'll also be playing in, what is it, the California Classic? Is that what they call it? In San Francisco. And, yeah, San Francisco. So, yeah. yeah, They'll be playing a couple games in San Francisco, so that might be his first uh, test there. Omer Yurtseven and I think Marcus Garrett are 
Vegas only players. They won't be playing in California, but it's interesting to see Yurt Seven getting that kind of repetition in minutes. He should have, I think he'll have a breakout. Like he had a breakout last year in Summer League. I think he'll have one this year as well. So it should be interesting to see uh, him perform at a high level. And he is, he is an option. Like, I mean, he's on the roster. He could take yes. that leap. We've seen that before with Heat development that, you know, all of a sudden a player that's kind of a borderline fringe player might all of a sudden take that leap. Max Struess last year started in summer league. It, the the breakout exactly. began in summer league, and next thing you know, he's starting. So yeah, Omar Yurtsman absolutely is an option for the C team. They're going to keep their, you know, they're going to see what he can do at summer league. All right. So who are some of the names on your list? I know you've got a couple of names there worth getting into. So I'll repeat: Otto Porter, Kyle Anderson, definitely options with the mid level exception if they're looking for more of that stretch for kind of swing yep. forward kind of player who I think would be those both of them would be great fits if you can get either of them for the mid level exception home run for the heat plug them in power forward problem solved not quite the PJ Tucker look a little bit different maybe a little bit more dynamic right yeah could be really interesting but if they did want to go in the direction of more of a traditional big to replace PJ Tucker two names that I've heard and I've got intel on this two names that I've heard Miami would consider if they become available Bobby Portis and Mo Bamba uh the heat Took one power forward away from Milwaukee already. And if Bobby Portis, who is 10 years younger than P.J. Tucker, does mm -hmm. opt out to seek a long-term deal as he's expected to do, I think the Heat would see what it would take. Now, the overall expectation um, is that Bobby Portis will opt out but then re-sign with Milwaukee on a, using his early bird right extension. And I yeah. think that's something valued at like $12 million or something like that. The Heat can't get mm -hmm. there. But if for whatever reason Milwaukee lowballs Bobby Portis the way they did last year with PJ Tucker, I think the Heat would try to swoop in and grab Bobby Portis, and so I they they'll be interested in Bobby Portis depending on how that turns out. And then as for Obama, a little bit more complicated. He's a restricted free agent, but um, if the Magic renounce him and let him become an unrestricted free agent, the Heat would explore <laughs> using a portion of their MLE on him. Um, but also, you know. They could potentially trade for him too if he if he remains that restricted free agent. And trading for him becomes a little bit more difficult unless Orlando is interested in Duncan Robinson. And so those are the two names I've heard Miami would consider. And just for fun, David, I kicked the the Mo Bamba thing at our locked on magic host, uh Philip Rossman Reich. Uh, I was like, would you what do you think the magic would uh like do you think the magic would be interested in Duncan Robinson? And he said, yeah. He said he's sort of exactly the kind of player that they need. And so I threw out like a Duncan Robinson plus Omer Yurtsevin for Mo Bamba. And then you sign Mo Bamba to like mm. a four-year, $45 million deal the way we just saw Boston do with Robert Williams, kind of buy low on him. I think that I think both of those are options that the Heat are going to explore. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Portis move just because, well, it's Bobby Portis, uh, and I'm not sure. He, he does have weaknesses defensively. Yes, championship experience, et cetera. He can stretch the floor sometimes. You texted uh, me, uh, Ugg, when I sent you the Bobby yeah. Portis stuff. You texted me, uh, yeah. what's the deal with Bobby Portis that you don't like? Why don't you like him? I, it's, I just don't like Bobby Portis, period. Like, I, I'm not, I, I don't know. Uh, Shout out to Alphonse Sidney of the Miami Heat beat who called for calling him uh what was it great value, great value, Kevin Garnett. Like the crazy eyes, the intensity, the fake intensity. Uh, I think. I don't know. It's just something about him that I've never been a big fan of, huh. of, of Portis. Uh, he feels like the, a guy that punch. he's like a he's always a fan favorite. He was a fan favorite at Arkansas, Chicago, and Milwaukee. I think the Heat, I think Heat yeah. fans would would change their I think you would change your tune if Bobby Portis ends up here. No. Yeah. No, no, you would no, just sorry, not like no. him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ask Nikola Miritich whether or not he thinks Bobby Portis is a great guy. Uh, anyway, uh, well, the Mo Bamba one's more interesting because of the youth. Although I am like, I am a little suspect because I I, I saw him up close in in uh, Orlando during yeah. his rookie year. He was often injured. Uh, he's shown some progress, obviously, but he had to work through a lot of injury just to get to this point. He is that three and B option. He's what seven foot four. He yeah. shoots the three ball at 35%. Seven four? seven four wingspan, right? He's not actually seven four, is he? I, I think he is. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I Jesus. think he is. He, he's a maybe I'm he's wrong. He's listed but, uh, at seven foot. Oh, no, seven, seven foot. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. But sorry, he's got like bad. that I huge wingspan. It's like a seven eight wingspan. It's one of the longest wingspans ever tested at the combine, right? Which I think is what you're yeah. referencing. 38% on fourth attempts per game last season, Mo Bamba. Also had uh, 1.7 blocks per game. 
averaged about 26 minutes. Um, elite three-point shooter at his position. Like we talked about Bam getting from just yeah. n- nothing three-pointer to even respectable being virtually impossible. Mo Bamba is already that. Now, obviously, there's things defensively that he has to clean up. Uh, he has to clean up the fouling stuff. He does foul a lot. He needs to become better at just general rim protection despite just the the height that he comes with. But um, it would be an interesting buy low candidate because he's only 24 years old, same age as Bam yeah. out of Io. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like the fit there. I kind of do. No, I, I love it. I love it. I like uh, for everything that I've said negatively about him just now. I, I think that's yeah. that's like the best option, uh, really, just in terms of youth, in terms of upside, in terms of getting out of the hellhole that is Orlando and being put in a real franchise that's run well and gives you a clear cut identity and what mm-hmm. you're supposed yeah. to do and target goals that you can reach and the means in order to get them and reach yeah. them. So. He will thrive in Miami. At least that's my opinion. I think yeah. he's. Uh, I have so also talented, seen. Him. Man. He's so he talented, and that's the other uh, thing that also... you and I were talking about going into this offseason was the Heat. I think just have like their biggest need to me is just raw talent, athleticism, size, all these things. Mobamba at least brings that. Okay. Uh, I also saw him. I, I, this is on social media, so take it for what it's worth. Something about oh, let's go get it. Uh, I think a in reference to a tweet or a post of some kind about going to play in New York. I think the Knicks are an option there for him. He, he's mm. from New York originally. He played in Texas, but he's from New York. So maybe he wants to go join Donovan Mitchell uh, in his hometown team in New York. Who's Who knows? It's uh, it's always a crapshoot. I'm not sure. sure what the goal is for him. But it's- well, the Knicks are spending all Having their money. Said that, the Knicks are spending all their money on Jalen Brunson, so that might not be an option for them. You got it. Having so. said that, uh, there's another Knicks center that I think is worth exploring. That's Mitchell Robinson. I think he's okay. another guy. Not a three-point shooter, obviously, but a springy big. You're talking about talent and athleticism. Just the guy that hops that you're looking for, a guy who can finish at the rim, a lob threat, et cetera. Yeah. I think Mitchell Robinson is a nice complimentary player there. I think Elite he's young enough blocker. also. Yes. I think he's young enough also where, again, take him out of a badly run franchise like New York, put him in Miami, and we'll see him reach another level of his development. I have so much faith in Miami's development system, as all of you should as well, and I think he could come here and thrive. But if you're looking at – go ahead. You guys have problem, no, but, problem but to with, fix to fix the injury issues, though, because those those are real. Like, do you yeah. – I mean, there's something, that, there's something to be said about Miami's conditioning program, and maybe that yeah. would help him. It's a real I, question. I I'm, just, I'm honestly asking you. No, yeah. no. I, I think it's – you know, the injury things are probably a little overblown in that, well, why the hell would you want to play 82 games for New York anyway? Like, I, I mean, I know they're making injuries. injuries. I, well, I think they kind of shut him down also. They like when they're tanking away or when they're just kind of like, oh, he's not really going to come through, et cetera. Like, I, I mean, I don't know. Let me see. How many games did he miss last year? Was it a significant I'm looking it up right now. Uh, played 72 uh, games last year. 72 yeah, games. Yeah, 31 the year, year before that. the year where they didn't make the playoffs. It's actually, you're right. Yeah, they were a little season. overblown. Yeah. It, was just, it was just one year that he really was dealing with the injury issues. So I, I think it's a possibility. Again, maybe maybe or out to some degree. The spacing might be a little wonky, but if you want somebody who has upside and can still play yeah. a key role off the bench alongside Omer Yurtseven, I don't see why you wouldn't kick the tires of Mitchell Robinson now. The other one thing with I'm Mitchell sure, Robinson, uh, one thing with I'm sorry, of, one thing on Mitchell Robinson is he's gonna have to take less money to play for yeah. Miami, right? Because I think a lot of Teams would, would probably pay him more than the tax pyramid level. Maybe he would. Maybe, like you said, he's sick of a, uh, an organization like New York. Maybe he wants to come to one right. like Miami. Who knows what these guys' priorities are? And at the end of the day, would the Heat use their full mid-level exception on him? I don't know. Is it worth hard capping your roster for Mitchell Robinson? It, it, it depends on how the rest of the offseason shakes out and what you think you could do later during the season. But uh, it is an option. Right. It is an option. Can I throw one other name at you? Yeah. Isaiah Hartenstein. But you got to say it how Kevin Harlan says it. Isaiah Hartenstein. Um, seems like he's the odd man out with the Clippers. In they LA. just re-signed Ivaka Zubac. They're bringing in John Wall with their mid-level exception. So they're not going to have the mid-level exception to use on Isaiah Hartenstein. A little bit like a P.J. Tucker type of situation for L.A. where they, they would have to dip into that MLE to bring back Hartenstein. So writing's on the wall. He's out. Um, he made... He, he's first of all, he's enormous. He's seven feet tall. I was really impressed with what he did in in like fifteen minutes a game for the Clippers last year. I, I kind of I liked him coming into the draft a few years ago. I, I'm a I've always been kind of a Hartenstein guy, but um, two things that jump out from he's his no box Walker score. Kessler. 
Sorry. 14, <laughs> 14 of 30 on three pointers last season. So almost 30, almost 50% on his threes last year. And then 4.7 assists per 36 minutes. So kind of, ha- so it has that playmaking style too. Right. Big body, solid rim protector, very good rebounder, flashes that ability to stretch the floor. If you could get him at a portion of the mid level exception, which it sounds like is what his valuation is going to be here. I love that for Miami. I love that, especially if you can ink him now to like a three-year deal at a lower contract. I think that would be a steal. Yeah, unrestricted, made 1.7 basically last year, so not looking for a huge payday, I'm sure. Uh, Probably looking for more stability at this point and playing time and opportunity, and I think Miami could probably offer a little bit of all of those things that he might be looking for, so it's an interesting name. And again, if you're not sacrificing playmaking ability, you can even add a little dimension of that in the center uh, position. I think it makes a lot of sense. Just Maybe a couple more names here, quick hitters that I've got. Uh, Demarcus Cousins. What do you think? Nope. Worth kicking the tires after a strong year. No, nope, not a starter. Not a starter. I, you need you need rotation, night to night rotation, guys. I mean, maybe on the minimum back end of the roster, but that's not a PJ. Andre Drummond. Placement. No, same thing. Maybe minimum contract back end of the roster, but not. Yeah. Not not somebody you could say, hey, here's fifteen to twenty minutes a night. No. He trains in Miami. I keep thinking that there's something there. If you're looking for an active, overly exaggerated stat line and rebounding, I think Drummond is certainly a name to consider. Defensively, he sacrificed a whole hell of a lot. I can't help yeah. but think that there's some way that Miami could find a way to salvage. Uh, I'm not ruling a one, out him. a promising career. I'm not yeah. ruling him out on a minimum, but as far as the P.J. Tucker solution, trying to find a fifth starter, that's not Andre Drummond. Serge Ibaka? No. Washed. <laughs> you, you think he's done, huh? You think he's? Done? I mean, everybody pretty much does, right? I mean, he couldn't even get on the court for Milwaukee after they traded for him. So I think he was hurt. There's a chance that he gets back to. He's hurt he every was. year. And of course, then the last name on my list, Hassan Whiteside. It's time for the return, Wes. I know that you're excited. I think we need to cut Hassan off this podcast era now. Two point oh. I don't, I don't know what you're drinking. You're not, you're not going. Your Whiteside's return. <laughs> Nothing no. yet, but I will be soon, especially if Whiteside rejoins. Sorry, this roster. Sorry, a large section of Heat fans out there going, "What? He was great for it's the triple doubles." It's, no, it's right I don't know that those Heat fans horizon. are around anymore. I think they left with Dion Waiters and Hassan Whiteside and that whole group. Damn, how quickly they jump ship. Anyway, thanks so much for making Lockdown Heat your first listen every day. Of course, we'll continue to break down some other potential names in free agency in our next episode as we queue up to the start of free agency. So make sure to stay subscribed to the show to get all the best coverage that you're looking for from your favorite team. For your second listen, get up to date on the latest news and rumors in the NBA in just 30 minutes every day with Locked on NBA, your daily NBA update in just 30 minutes. This is David Ramil signing off for now. Thanks so much for joining me, Wes. Wrap it up, B. No to Hassan Hassan. Whiteside.